Today's video, I want to show you a super easy strategy to automate part-time as a beginner algorithmic trader. So here's the idea. On payday, people are going to put a fixed percent of their check in an investment account. And in most cases, people buy the same things, right? You'll have index ETFs, maybe bonds, maybe favorite stocks like Apple or Tesla. And if everyone's paid on the same days, this creates a predictable buying effect. And the question is, is there a payday effect where we can get ahead of this predictable buying and trade it for a profit? So in this video, we're going to figure that out. So the research process to investigate this is first just to get some market prices. Then we're going to look at the distribution of returns by each day of the month. And we're going to look at interesting days like the 1st, the 15th, the 25th, and the 30th, which is when most people get paid. And then we're going to look at a strategy that buys on these days and sells on the next. And we'll do a back test for that. And then we'll try some variations to hopefully improve its performance. So get into some pros and cons for this strategy. The pros are that it's very low frequency. We're only going to do two or three trades a month, and therefore it's very low maintenance. We also only have a one day holding period. So you could even do this by hand if you wanted to, but it's also very, very easy to automate. So it's super friendly for beginners. Now the cons are that we could just get lucky on asset selection. It, it could be that our timing has nothing to do with it. And the, the thing that we're buying just was going to go up anyway. And another con is that this is very easy to replicate. So this is actually a rule from the book, the laws of trading, but basically the easier it is to replicate a strategy, the less secure the edge or the strategy. So, and then the last thing to cover before we get into coding is I'm Ben. I write trading bots in Python and I teach people how to do it on this channel too. Obviously this isn't financial advice, but the code for this video will be linked below in the description. So now let's take a look at some code. Uh, let's start off with just looking at SPY. SPY is going to be the S and P 500 ETF trust. It's going to track the overall market, making it very popular for investment accounts. And we're going to pull in its data from 1993 to 2024 for a total of 8,000 rows. Uh, and then what we're going to do first is convert the price data to returns data using the percent change function. And we're even going to add a column in called day, and then we're going to get the mean and sort to get the best days by return. And you'll see here that days one and 16 are right at the top. Now, if we look at this visually, we can see the returns by our day of the month for all of SPY. The first day of the month has an extremely high return. And then number two here is the 16th. And we even see little pockets around these, right? On the first, we have the most, but it's positive all the way through the fifth. And then around the 13th through the 18th, we also have another pocket of positivity. And then at the end of the month, we also have another pocket of mostly positive values. So this validates our idea. And now the question is, how does it actually do when we design a strategy around it? So first we're going to just say our buy days are going to be the first and the 16th, the two best days in the market. Uh, and then we're going to design our strategy to look at the percent returns on those days. And then on those days, we will get whatever spies returns were. And otherwise we'll just have a, a returns of zero. So we can look at our daily return distribution here across the entire period from the early nineties to 2024. Um, now, if we turn that into cumulative returns, we see a nice kind of up and to the right pattern. Now, of course, over the same time period, SPY in the overall market has also gone up quite a bit. So we'll have to take a look at how much value it adds. And now the other thing we'll notice here is that we do have a pretty fat drawdown right around 2020. And if you're watching, you can probably guess what that is, but we'll look into it a little bit more later. But the other thing is that there's also more to the picture when it comes to running a back test. So not only are we looking at our overall returns, but we're also interested in our volatility, our sharp ratio, and our maximum drawdown, as well as the drawdown duration. And these all need to be better than a reasonable benchmark, which in this case would just be buy and hold on SPY or the broader mark. Uh, and we'll, we'll actually want to calculate those with our back tests. So here we're going to use this library called Quantstats to do it. It's open source on GitHub. You'll find it there. And when we do that, we get our performance metrics for the strategy. So you'll see here that our cumulative return is 175% over the period. Now keep in mind, this is over 30 years and our compounded annual growth rate is only 2%. So it's really not that good. Another thing, our sharp is 0.54 and our maximum drawdown is negative 16.8%. We do this sort of back test. We also get all the stuff that I made by hand before, right? You'll recognize this chart as well as the daily returns. And we even get this drawdown chart as well, plus the sharp ratio. So basically you get all the stuff that I made by hand before, but a little bit better. We also get this strategy monthly returns chart. And you can see here for the first 10 years, it's pretty, it's decent, right? We have just kind of nice pockets of either neutral months or slightly green or slightly negative months. And then when we come over to the, the more recent times, we have this fat COVID crash. So that's what I was talking about earlier. When we see that really big drawdown, that's that negative 10% hit. So let's take a look at our current status. So first of all, the, the sharp of 0.5 really isn't that impressive. I think we kind of want to target a little bit higher for something that is active, especially because over the same period, a buy and hold strategy on SPY has a 0.63 sharp. So this isn't even outperforming our buy and hold strategy. So the question is, is it game over? And I think not yet, because this is just V1 of the strategy. And there's a lot of different things that we could do to potentially make it better. So let's discuss some ways that we could potentially improve it. So first of all, we could obviously trade more instruments than just one. We could also incorporate more trading days. 
And we can also incorporate a different holding period. So instead of just a one day holding period, we could do two, three or four days after the, the payday happens. Another thing we could do is also trade at different times of the day. So instead of trading from open to close, we could trade from close to close. It doesn't really matter. So these are all different ways we could tweak the strategy and then rerun the back test to see if it improves its performance. So the two that I'm gonna look at now are first trading more instruments and then also including more trading days. So that way the strategy basically gets to take more bets. It gets to trade the effect a little bit more and hopefully realize more PL from it. So if we look broader, we can assume that if the behavior also holds on other assets, we can be more confident in the payday effect existing. So we're gonna add in a bunch more assets. We'll have QQQ, IWM, DIA, VTI, EFA, XLF, GLD, and TLT. So these are all just gonna be ETFs that track some broader concept in the market, right? Small caps, growth stocks, large caps, international financials, gold, and long-term bonds. And we'll see if the same effect happens. So here we're gonna download all that data once again. Uh, we'll go back here to 2004, and we're just gonna pull off the adjusted close so we get kind of a nice data frame where we have our dates and then we have our close prices for all of these different instruments. Then we're gonna do the same sort of analysis that we did before, where now we're going to calculate the mean daily returns by the day of the month. So we'll have here again, now the rows will be days one through 30, and then we'll have the mean returns on those days for the different instruments. And if we plot this out as a heat map, we can really see what our effects are gonna be. And you'll notice right away that red or orangish is gonna be a nice positive return. And we actually do see the effect manifesting across all of the different instruments, where on the first and the second, we have mostly red here, right? We have mostly positive returns. The same thing on the 15th or the 16th, actually here, we have mostly positive returns. And then towards the end of the month, on the 28th and a little bit on the 29th, we once again see mostly positive returns. So this is really interesting. It kind of gives us some credence to the effect happening across multiple different instruments and these days being consistent. Now keep in mind, there is gonna be some correlation between these different products. I don't have those numbers off the top of my head. Part of that correlation may be because of this passive investment flow, right? Like there's kind of a chicken versus the egg thing here. But again, we do see specifically on the first and the 16th, right? We see just positive returns across the board. So that's, that's gonna give us a little bit more confidence in this payday effect at least meaning something to us, whether or not it's explained again by passive flows from people investing in their retirement accounts or something else. There's definitely at least a trend here across this much data and this many assets. So now let's take a look at a V2 of this strategy. So we're gonna first of all pull out all the winning days. So any day where the total returns are greater than zero and we're gonna get this list here. And then we're going to basically filter down the strategy to any of these winning days. So we have a lot more chances to actually place our trades here. And you'll see here, this is the result. So now we have 10 different assets as well as a lot more different days that we can place our bets. And we're gonna take the average returns across all of those trading days. And if we do a new uh, back test using quant stats again, we see here that our sharp ratio has gone up significantly. So now it's a 0.83 sharp. Our cumulative return is up to 500%. Our CAGR is up from 2% to almost 7%, uh, which again, is not too impressive, but at least it's better than it was before. And our maximum drawdown is now negative 14%. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that our uh, period has changed a little bit, right? We weren't able to get data from the 90s to 2004. So that may also be an influence here, but just something to keep in mind, we have improved the overall performance of the strategy. So now if we look at our strategy versus the buy and hold over the same period, so we have our sharp of 0.83 versus a sharp of 0.51. And generally this is a better strategy than just buying and holding the same thing. We can also see here that our strategy avoids some of the big drawdowns or some of the big negative periods uh, that the buy and hold one does. Now, I'm not entirely sure what the reason for that is, right? I mean, it might just be that we're not in the market as much, so we're not really like capturing as much risk as we might be if we were just buying and holding via the broader market. So for example, here in October of 2008, the buy and hold has a very drastically negative return, and that's probably for obvious reasons. And then here, it actually has a very positive return, most likely because it's just not in the market. It's not getting exposed to as much you know, pain as you would be if you were holding by during the great financial crisis. And then we actually see the same effect happening in March of 2020. For whatever reason, we're just not in the market when this big drawdown happens and that actually benefits us a decent amount. And keeping in mind the diversification across uh, multiple different instruments here as well. So you might be wondering what's next. Now we can always try to tweak more parameters, right? We could look at the different holding periods or the different time of day effects, as we mentioned. And then of course we can actually turn this into an automated strategy if you like. So if you wanna automate this sort of thing, you really don't need that many tools. You can just use Python for the code then you have some brokerage API, uh, whether it's interactive brokers, Alpaca, or anything you need. And then a scheduling tool like Cron to make sure that it buys on the first and the 15th or whatever days that you're interested in, and then sells the next. And then finally some minimal server, even a Raspberry Pi for the deployment, and that'll get you in shape. So I'm gonna leave it at that for today, guys. If you do want to grab the code for this video, I do have a Jupyter notebook available with everything that you've seen. I'm just gonna host it here in our free trading community or algorithmic traders. The link will be in the description or you can go to school.com slash algos to find it. 
you can take 30 seconds to join. We have all of our, our code and our videos and our different resources posted here. And you get to meet other people who are also on the same learning journey that you might be on as well. So if you want to do that, go to school.com slash algos. The link will be in the description and I hope to see you there.